In this recording, I want to talk to you about the Z spread or the zero volatility spread, an important component of the fixed income CFA level one uh, curriculum. So if this is something you want to get right in the CFA level one exam, I suggest you keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question which I want us to go through. A three year, 1000 euro, 5% annual coupon callable corporate bond is trading at a Z spread of 160 basis points. It is determined that the value of the call option expressed in basis points per year is 46 basis points. Now, I'm not really going to utilize the information from that second sentence yet. There will be a follow on question after this one, which uh, will get us to think in terms of the uh, call option value. So for now, I'm going to ignore that parameter. The following benchmark spot rates are available. So for different maturities, one, two and three years, we've got spot rates of whatever is shown here. And first of all, we're asked for the price of the bond. What is it closest to? Three options follow. So let me tell you how we're going to utilize the Z spread or the Z spread as some people call it. First of all, the Z spread or the zero volatility spread is a constant spread. So a kind of addition um, over the government spot curve. And uh, what do we mean actually by this? Well, we're told over here in the question that the Z, Z spread, sorry, is 160 basis points. And what that implies is, if you take these spot rates to discount future cash flows associated with fixed income instruments, the bonds specifically, well, because these are described as benchmark spot rates, they would be relevant for valuing or discounting cash flows associated with, I guess, a government bond given its low level of risk. However, when you are discounting corporate bonds, or in particular callable bonds, which add an extra feature of risk or element of risk for the holder of these bonds, you shouldn't be discounting them using the benchmark spot rates, which when taken together make up a curve, uh, you should be adding a bit of a premium. And that premium is called the Z spread indeed. So what I'm going to do is in order to compute the value of the bond, which is what we're asked about here, compute its present value or today's price. I'm going to take the cash flows of that bond Look, it's a 1,000 euro nominal value, three-year bond with 5% coupon. So each coupon is simply going to be 50 euros, another 50 euros. And, you know, the third one is going to be 1,050. That's the third cash flow, which includes the coupon and the return or the redemption of nominal value. And I'm going to discount each one of these using the appropriate factor. And this is going to be for the first one, year one, year two, year three, one plus whatever is the relevant benchmark spot rate. So um, 0 0.0219 in this case. And on top of that, we will kind of slap on, add the Z spread which is 160 basis points or 1.6 of a percent. So 0 0.016. Same thing for the second year cash flow. Let's try to squeeze this in. So this is 50, but discounted by one plus. Now take the two year spot rate, 0 0.0. 305 and add to this on top of it the zero volatility spread which is a constant spread meaning you add it this is a spread you need to add to every single spot rate in order to correctly value the uh, relevant bond so once again 0 0.016 however because this is a cash flow coming from year two i'm going to raise this obviously to the power of two. And for the third one, 
1050 discounted by a factor of one plus use the three year spot rate 0 0.0372 and on top of this once again this constant 0 0.016 raised this time to the power of three okay so our calculation is laid out let's now go to the calculator to perform this discounting Okay, so because my calculator is uh, set to AOS, Algebraic Operating System, as opposed to the chain rule, um, it should be able to handle this computation pretty easily without, you know, writing sub-results down. If you haven't yet changed the setting of your calculator to AOS, I suggest you do it as quickly as possible, and there's a separate video um, on that, uh, on the channel, I'll include a link to it in the description of this uh, recording. So let's let's start with uh, the discounting. So I'm doing 50 divided by, let me open a bracket, 1 plus 0 0.0219 plus 0 0.016, obviously close bracket, plus. Okay, that, so that's the first cash flow discounted and we can see the result over here. Now, obviously, the trick here is to get these <laughs> inputs right. It's so easy to get them wrong on the calculator, um, but hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll get them right. Uh, the next one, 50 divided by, now open a bracket again, 1 plus 0 0.0305 plus 0 0.0116. Close bracket, and we need to raise this to the power of two. So I'm hitting the x squared key, and it's raised this to the power of two, and it does so before it does any division, uh, because we're following uh, the rules of algebra, hence algebraic operating system. Now plus, and I can see the result for the two cash flows discounted combined, and the third one, one thousand fifty divided by open bracket 1 plus 0 0.0372 plus once again that 0 0.016 close bracket and now hit the key y to the power of x which is just above the 9 key and input the exponent input the power power of 3 and hopefully when I hit enter, I'm going to be looking at the right result. Yes, it shows me, my calculator shows me 992.616, which I guess we can round to 992.62. And if we check back against the answers or potential answers, this corresponds very nicely with answer A. And this is the solution to the Z spread question.